Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I come online, I take your hot takes, your unpopular opinions, your tough questions, I respond to the best ones, but in this episode, I asked all of you, in your opinion, I asked a, a specific question, in your opinion, what is the most annoying song? and why, and I will be responding to your responses now. Happy by Pharrell. It isn't that horrible of a song, but it was released while I was in middle school, and it was everywhere, sporting events, pep rallies, school dances, etc. It was inescapable for too long, and now I resent it. Yeah, generally speaking, I don't mind Happy. It's easily the best track off of that frickin' Pharrell record, and uh, I find it very catchy. While I generally don't hate the song, I guess the track can be interpreted as annoying as it is kind of trying to force a feeling onto you, and if, if you're not in a position where you are receptive to that emotion or that feeling, uh, it, it can feel pretty annoying. No one wants to be sad or mad or depressed and then all of a sudden Happy by Pharrell comes on. That's the last thing you want. All Star by Smash Mouth. I feel like I'm gonna get hate for this. I think it's a great song, but after the memes and everything, I swear I've had it in my head on and off for years. It just creeps up on me and refuses to leave. Yeah, I guess the track does have a quality of uh, not really leaving your brain once it's in. It sort of becomes a part of your genetic code. But you know what, frankly, it is a special song. It is a fun song. <laughs> I, I, I love that it's become such a meme, and uh, I, I, I harbor no uh, hatred or ill will toward the track. In fact, uh, in my old age, I probably enjoy it a lot more than I did when it originally dropped. I will say, in its post-ironic resurgence, I enjoy the track more than ever, and uh, uh, I, I love it, I just love it. Who let the dogs out? I don't need to explain why. No, you certainly do not need to explain why. I have named this track as one of the worst songs of my adolescence. I still feel that way. And I'm not sure what's more annoying, the overly busy rhythms or the frickin' vocals on the verses, but, but truly and honestly, it really is the chorus that seals the deal and makes me wanna die. Who let the dogs out? Woo, 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 woo. Who let the dogs out? Living on a prayer, which has been especially ruined by ever going Going to a sporting event, lyrics are cringy, sappy, instrumentals are boring and repetitive, and it's a worse Don't Stop Believing, which also sucks. Don't Stop Believing doesn't suck. But yeah, I generally agree with the sentiment that uh, hearing a certain song or a set of songs blasted over and over and over at sporting events, that can really ruin a song, or at least one's perception of a song. Still, having said that, I've never really had too many negative uh, feelings on that particular Bon Jovi song. If I had to pick a Bon Jovi song that I didn't think was overly corny or just uh, uh, difficult to listen to, it, it would be that song. Although I will agree with the sentiment that uh, uh, Don't Stop Believing is better. Whoa! We're halfway there! Whoa! Leave it on a prayer! Hot Shower. His voice inflections throughout are obnoxious. The lyrics are terrible and even straight cringy at points. The beat is so bland, yet somehow so grating at the same time. The features make the song better, but I can't make it through Chance's performance to get there. Yeah, that's generally the issue with a lot of tracks off of uh, uh, The Big Day, that Chance ruins the song so hard, you don't want to get to the parts that might actually be okay. But Hot Shower might be the greatest defender in terms of terrible writing, terrible vocal inflections, really corny trap beat. I don't know if it's the most annoying song of all time though, certainly in the top three of that album, but there are certainly tracks that get my blood boiling a lot faster than Hot Shower. Plus, uh, with the lack of popularity of The Big Day and Hot Shower, it's pretty easy to avoid, so the, the chances of the song even annoying you are pretty low. Wonderwall. I worked in a restaurant that played it every 20 minutes. It is the world's most blandest song ever. I despise that song with every aspect of my being. Seeing a bit of a pattern here with some of the responses that people tend to be the most annoyed by songs 
that they hear the most. And it's like a double-edged sword because a lot of this stuff is just pop music. And those same qualities that make pop music so easy to listen to and gravitate to really quickly are also those very same qualities that make it easy to get sick of it so quickly. Because by the 20th or 30th time that you've heard it, uh, there's no real point to listen to it anymore because you've explored every nook and cranny of it because it's so goddamn basic and bland and was so quick to try to impress you with uh, the simplest ideas that it could possibly present. And now uh, those ideas, those sounds have lost their novelty really quickly, like a piece of old chewing gum. Now listen, I think there is a lot of good pop music out there that does hold up to replay scrutiny because there are some great performances in it, maybe good production, great sense of detail. However, Wonderwall is not one of those songs. Like, <laughs> Wonderwall instrumentally is basic as fuck. Uh, it's kind of like the British time of your life uh, from Green Day, which I mean, I. Pretty sure Wonderwall came out first. <laughs> it in fact did. But you get what I'm saying. You know, if there had to be a bad American version of that song, just as basic, just as annoying, just as overplayed, it, it would be time of your life. The most annoying song as of right now is Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi. Atrocious vocals, basic bland lyrics, paint by the numbers piano playing, and it's played absolutely everywhere. What people see in it, I have no idea. Prior to reading this comment over here, I have never heard this song. Had to go listen to it. And yeah, it's a super basic four chord piano song using the same goddamn formula you've heard a million times already. I swear, when the piano came in at first, it was like, wait, have, have I not heard this? I Okay, I've heard this before. And then once the mediocre singing came in, it was like, oh wait, I have not heard this before. And it's basically this dude who's not that great of a singer, uh, just uh, caterwaul over this piano passage that I swear I've heard underneath dozens of tracks, which again, I pretty much have given this same four chord formula has been used in pop music uh, really innumerable times. So if this track is truly being played everywhere, kind of shocking. Uh, not only shocking that people would like it, but also shocking that someone <laughs> would actually be able to uh, remember it and discern it from other songs that sound exactly like it. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's pretty bad. All about that bass by Megan Trainer. Easily one of the most annoying, poorly made, lazy, cheap, and generally dumbest pop songs of the 2010s. That also marked the beginning of the career of one of the worst artists of the 2010s. Yeah, there are aspects of All About That Bass that I think are kind of cute, a little heartening. Uh, but generally, I can't listen to the track because I think it's just too patronizing. I'm all for this idea that uh, people have different shaped bodies and there's no reason that we can't collectively celebrate that societally or in our media. We don't need to constantly be bombarding everyone with like, you know, one preferred or ideal body type when there are, there are lots of sexy bodies out there. Having said that, who wants to be patronized like this? Like, you know, I, I, I don't need this message. I don't need this feeling like chewed up and spit back out like baby food and sort of like fed to me with a plastic spoon. Like who, who wants that? Yeah, by Usher, because the goddamn triangle that plays every four bars, I cannot escape it pain out of 10. I remember enjoying that song quite a bit and I thought I had a vague idea of what our commenter here was saying, but it's been a long time since that track has been in a regular rotation, and um, I, I just couldn't recall exactly what our friend was going on about here. And I put on the track, I did hear that long, ringing, singular triangle hit right at the start of the track, and I thought, okay, I've heard that before. You know, I, I thought that was just like an intro thing. But then the, the longer the track went on, the more the triangle went on. And the more apparent that it became, the triangle lasts a really long time. It's not like a small ding. It's it's it is a bang that just like calls over almost an entire bar. And it's like, damn, why is that so loud? And why does it repeat so many times? And why is it so hideous? Like, what do you have to do to a triangle to produce that sound? You really got to be beating the shit out of it. So yeah, thank you. Uh, not that that was one of my favorite songs ever to begin with, but. Uh, now that you have pointed this out, I cannot unhear it, song ruined, 
You're an ass. Baby Shark. It's easily the biggest symbol of the 2010s drop in the quality of kids' content, and it gets played no matter where I am at all times of the day. I'm not strong enough to survive the constant onslaught of Baby, Mommy, Daddy, Grandpa, and Grandma Shark. Melon, help me. Where are you that this song gets played all the time? I mean, I, I feel like I'm an adult and I work mostly from home, and I don't really have to be anywhere that I don't want to be at most points of the day when I do go out. So it's rare I'm in a situation where I, like, I gotta be anywhere where Baby Shark is playing. But are you hearing this at work, at school? I know the track is overplayed. Like, it has billions of views on YouTube. On top of that, I've seen tons of Baby Shark marketing as a result of how popular that thing is, because anything that gets popular with kids, you have to turn it into a plastic piece of shit and sell it back to them for like 20 to $80. But having said that, uh, I don't know if it's the worst or most annoying children's song of all time. I mean, having heard it, uh, it doesn't strike me as uh, like the most excruciating children's song I've ever heard, uh, but I will say, uh, overplay of all of those uh, will will certainly probably suck away uh, what you know the soul juice out of the human soul. That's what empowers the soul. The soul juice. And uh, too many of those doot doo doos uh, will suck away your soul juice. Does the Cars for Kids jingle count? Well, Psycho Stick, it does in fact count. Um, <laughs> what is it? 1877 Cars for Kids. K A R S Cars for Kids. Yeah, that's, it's, it's kind of annoying. Uh, there, there's like a really bad, sort of amateurish. A quality to it where everyone's singing terribly, the piano is played terribly, but it's trying to be cute and it's not really all that cute. It just ends up sounding like, uh, you know, your, your uh, kid's terrible middle school uh, music recital that you don't want to be at. And uh, I don't know, may maybe there was uh, some kind of like uh, focus group testing here uh, involving, um, you know, uh, that feeling, creating that same sensation in the listener, maybe it makes them want to, like, give up their cars, uh, because once you've heard it in your car, you can never enjoy that car like you used to. <laughs> so you have to give the car up, because it's, it's now been sullied by the Cars for Kids jingle. Basically any Christmas song when you have worked retail. Yes and no. Mariah Carey's Christmas stuff is pretty fire no matter how much you play it. There is a Christmas song that is the bane of my existence, and that is Paul McCartney's wonderful Christmas time. Fuck that song. And it is one of the most annoying Christmas songs, period. Not only because of those crappy synthesizers, that synthesizer, but also that melody. That hook melody is trash, is terrible, is garbage. Zombie by the Cranberries. This song haunts me since, since forever, I guess. Like, were, were you born when the song was at its peak of popularity or something and you just kind of remember hearing it around you all the time? Personally, uh, I remember that song being incredibly popular when I was a kid and uh, frankly, it was, it was one of those tracks I never really got sick of. I still love it to this day. It's an intense song, man. I love the instrumental, I love the vocal performance, I love how dark it is, I love how it swells. It's such a dynamic song, too. I lived through eras where that song has virtually just disappeared from the radio, where that song was played ad nauseum on the radio, and I, I never really hated it, generally because I, I, think, it's, I think it's a great song. I fly west the Oh, say does that star spang. Thank you, though, for watching this new episode of Let's Argue. You're the best. Over here next to my head is another episode that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Let's Argue forever.